I, uh, I was trying to make a video for uh, a few days now, but uh, all kinds of stuff seems to be happening. And uh, I got uh, a gig uh, to play in a war movie. And uh, this is subsequent to another gig I, I did a year ago or so. Uh, I guess the movie is out and the, uh, uh, the director, he didn't send me my clips or even uh, bother to sign me up with IMDB because I'm supposed to add up to my credits. And uh, 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 the, I think the name of the movie, another actor told me was uh, Behind Enemy Lines by Tom Sizmore. I uh, play a Taliban uh, that uh, gets caught and they hit, they knife him to death. And then um, in this movie that I'm playing, uh, it's in San Diego, I play uh, again, uh, I don't play a Taliban, I play a Afghani. And uh, he, uh, he, he gets killed too. So <laughs> basically I'm getting killed in every movie I play. Well, I played the uh, one comedy, I didn't get killed in that one. But hey, this could be career and, and negative roles. I guess the artist, uh, uh, Tom, uh, he, they pick out people who uh, they can exhibit uh, real emotions. Uh, uh, just because I hate US government, and I think the, the stuff they're doing around the, around the world sucks doesn't mean that I have to get killed in every movie I play. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm working on my dark humor too, and uh, maybe that will get me somewhere. Uh, well, uh, I I'm getting paid for this gig, and it's all, it's all right daily rate, and it's, it's not bad. Uh, um, they did pay me to show up for, uh, for rehearsal. And so I'm getting a, a, a week out of it. This is pretty good. Um, I'm okay with playing negative roles. But uh, speaking of Afghanistan and uh, um, the stuff the United States is doing, uh, by the way, I'm Iranian. Uh, uh, I'm of Azari descent, which is like uh, ethnic uh, Turks. Uh, but uh, my family has been in Iran for centuries. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, my brother, my, all my family there in Tehran. But uh, I, I'm not Afghani, but I was close. So that was uh, a good hit. Uh, but uh, uh, this brings us to our discussion about Afghanistan that the uh, uh, Trump administration is increasing no the number of troops in Afghanistan, even though the Afghanistan government uh, has repeatedly, uh, many times in the past, uh, protested uh, foreign troops on their soil. Uh, Mr. Karzai, the previous uh, uh, previous president, uh, he never wanted to sign the extension to for these foreign troops to stay there, and then. Uh, uh, he, he called uh, the new president uh, a traitor, uh, I guess. Even the new president, they don't have choice because the United States has also uh, a group where they call themselves, I don't know what they call them, they're CIA, but they, they are in Langley and they go around and they, they kill off or, or, or people who don't like uh, uh, U.S. Uh, presidents like uh, the Japanese or people who are even allies of the United States. Uh, I guess there was a suspicion that the, the Fukushima uh, accident was caused by some kind of nuclear experiment on the ocean floor. Or um, the the governments they are getting into so many dangerous things. Uh, the Russian foreign ministry told the United States that we have heavy and burning nukes uh, by your coastal areas. <laughs> I mean, how, how, how bad things can get before uh, a major war would start? But uh, usually, uh, when a country uh, 
doesn't listen to uh, world opinion or uh, world leaders uh, and uh, extends their uh, military presence or uh, increases the number of troops and that kind of shows a certain weakness in, uh, in their diplomatic uh, approach or diplomatic uh, strength because many countries, uh, major countries they, they sell them, they, they use uh, uh, actual uh, troops or actual warfare to get uh, through to the to other countries. Usually, uh, uh, Iran uh, uh, handles everything, uh, almost everything through uh, foreign ministry, but uh, I, I, I think that even Iran is going to get into a warfare or naval warfare with the United States, uh, but uh, the uh, the title of this uh, video is uh, that uh, America's uh, diplomatic and military uh, failings or bankruptcies uh, that, and th th there is a lot of evidence but the most uh, Americans they, they don't look at all this stuff because they got so much uh, hubris and so much uh, uh, brainwashing uh, and their government, they, they, they don't tell them anything uh, that they don't need to know. But uh, hey, uh, you hear clips and little uh, pieces of news here and there that shows uh, some of this stuff. Uh, when uh, the United States was going through the Cuban Missile Crisis, and Kennedy had uh, kind of half-heartedly uh, initiated the uh, operation in the uh, Bay of Pigs, then he changed his mind and uh, he, he kind of came out and said that uh, we need to uh, uh, keep our international uh, agreement uh, if at some point in the future the foreign uh, governments they lose faith in us uh, you know this could be really bad because uh, uh, well, this has happened now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm telling many governments, foreign governments, totally don't trust United States government. Uh, in fact, the U.S. government is a very untrustworthy uh, uh, criminal government and totally does not respect international law and does not respect sovereignty of the other countries. Uh, at every opportunity it gets, either overtly or covertly, and tries to undermine uh, foreigners or foreign governments. Or, uh, in fact, uh, even the closest allies of the United States, like Saudis, uh, Israel, are, are very uh, worri worried and uh, mindful of U.S. meddling in all their efforts. Uh, they, they interfere in almost every election around the world that they can get their hands on. and. Uh, then they come around and cry that, hey, the Russians are meddling in our efforts, which is totally not true. Uh, but losing that diplomatic uh, trust, not being able to resolve uh, given countries' uh, problems with foreigners is, is, is really, really bad. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to tell you a couple of examples of it. Uh, when uh, there was uh, uh, the Iraqis, they suddenly invaded Iran and bombed uh, many cities uh, without any warning. Uh, this was right after the revolution. It, it really shocked many Iranians, and there was a huge reaction inside Iran. Anyhow, uh, uh, this war lasted like eight years, and as the war dragged on, Iraq uh, lost all its initial advantages. They had occupied and set fire to uh, one, of, uh, one of the Iranian states, and they also destroyed the petrochemical uh, industries. And uh, then uh, the war dragged on, and they, they lost all the territory. Then Iran came around with, uh, uh, with rockets that they were purchasing from Russia and other countries started the healing back and uh, also there were um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of invasion of Iraq itself from uh, 
uh, different parts. We have a huge border with them. Anyhow, it, it, it ruined the Saddam Hussein's uh, resources and finally he got tired and came around and offered to make peace with Iran. Uh, but uh, Khomeini, he, he did not want to take uh, the offer because uh, of so much mistrust that uh, he said that uh, uh, we don't know these people, uh, they will uh, regroup and rearm and, uh, and do this and that and do some more and uh, w w what peace is that? And uh, finally, after eight years, and there was a famous sentence by Khomeini, he said that uh, I, I think he knew that he's going to die soon. Uh, I don't know what the doctor had told him. That uh, is, uh, making peace with Iraq is like taking a uh, chalice of poison. Uh, he finally made peace, and by then Iraq was in such debt, uh, and the United States is in a similar situation because of all the foreign wars and stupid ventures they have engaged in. Uh, nobody trusts the U.S. government or diplomats, and. Uh, they are in, in, in tremendous amount of debt. But uh, then uh, what happened uh, is that the Kuwait and, or Amir of Kuwait was financing Saddam Hussein and he went uh, to Saddam Hussein and asked for his money or portion of it or whatever. And Saddam Hussein didn't have the money because he, instead of building petrochemical facilities or expanding uh, uh, expanding different industries, uh, he had engaged in warfare, go from place to place. Uh, instead of paying Co Kuwait or Amir of Kuwait back, he invaded Kuwait, that, and that initiated yet another war. So, just was he was doing exactly what the United States is doing: engage in militarism, go from place to place, and uh, see, see what happens. He completely wrecked Iraq uh, recklessly. If you look at some of the images of Iran, Iraq border uh, from the satellite, you see that on the Iranian side, the place is packed with farms. You, you can see the dividing lines of all the farms, and uh, it, it, nothing but farms and and, and now the Iranian uh, government has uh, instituted heavily industrialization and they have built many petrochemical and nuclear facilities and uh, uh, they make shit that they're, they're industrialized beyond Germany even. Uh, they, and they make all their own weapons and uh, some of the most advanced drones and weapons. But when you look at the Iraqi side, you don't see any lines dividing uh, uh, farms and uh, just uh, and uh, you can compare what the Saddam Hussein did with the stupid government the United States has and they have outsourced all the industries uh, they have outsourced uh, manufacturing they have outsourced even farming uh, they import food uh, from South America fruits even simple stuff. Uh, I don't know if they import sugar, but uh, they're not. They're, they're, uh, and uh, any opportunity that there is to start a little war, uh, they, they are up for it and uh, they, they present it like they have no choice but to go to war with North Korea or with China or with uh, Iran or with Russia. This is just. You always have choices. You always have diplomatic choices. Uh, if I was a U.S. diplomat, I could resolve 90% of what the United States is struggling with with just handshakes. Uh, I, I mean, if, if they hired me to go around the world, uh, I would have better political capital than Kerry and me. Because th when these guys go around, everybody knows they are fraud and they, they, they are a bunch of liars and, and as soon as they get a chance, they're going to do some, the other thing. And, uh, but uh, 
uh, I think the Iranian diplomats or Russian diplomats are far more successful and they, they, they have made peace and uh, you know thi this is a diplomatic failing uh, also a form of uh, uh, like a loss of diplomatic capital uh, that other countries trust and have faith in a government and they would make uh, agreements and they would keep those agreements which is not true for the US government uh, it, it cannot make uh, an agreement uh, and everybody knows that uh, they are untrustworthy and uh, they, they don't uh, respect the uh, sovereignty of other countries and you can see this reaction with uh, China, with uh, North Korea, with uh, uh, many countries uh, and if uh, and most countries uh, of the world, their foreign policy is to keep the United States at bay, keep them out of their borders, not to get into their crosshair, or, or and uh, uh, and the, whole, the rest of the world is rapidly industrializing, uh, rapidly building up. Uh, I heard that uh, uh, Chinese are making. Uh, fast trains in Africa I mean, um, all this is stuff that the Americans and their industry should have been doing around the world and making the money uh, should uh, is, is being done by uh, foreigners, by Russians by, uh, the only thing that, uh, that we are doing is uh, making Hollywood movies that uh, hey, telling the world hey, you know, look at the people like Hassan, actors uh, and uh, they, they look like just like Afghani or Irani and we'll kill them, look how we kill them and uh, if you don't listen to us uh, you just export more uh, militarism and more stupid shit that uh, nobody wants to hear it and the other, uh, the other bankruptcy that the United States has gone through I had no idea this is uh, happening is uh, in uh, terms of military hardware uh, and weapons and also in the, uh, in the training and readiness of uh, troops and uh, uh, the also their quantity because the quantity of troops matter uh, like uh, uh, for example in Iran, Iraq war the Iran lost 600,000 soldiers but we have a million and a half uh, soldiers uh, and also uh, they can enlist m many more people and uh, we are fighting for our own country we are, not, we are not exporting ourselves across the world that's not the case with the United States uh, the, as far as the manufacturing weapons uh, uh, the weapons that the I mean, Russia and Iran manufacture any kind of weapon that the, uh, that the United States can make. Yeah, and some of them are much better. I was watching the display of Iranian weapons, and they had made a two-man team. Uh, it was like a tripod, tricycle, uh, what was it, a motorcycle or a tricycle, right, with the stinger type uh, uh, Weapon that uh, shoots the rocket at any kind of uh, uh, any kind of plane. I mean, uh, just the thing itself changed the war in Afghanistan. Uh, Iran makes thousands of them, and they are making their own uh, 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 anti-aircraft. Uh, it's it's called Bobar. It's a uh, more advanced than S three hundred, but not as advanced as S four hundred. So it's like in between, uh, and the Iran is manufacturing uh, Sukhoi 30 with Russians, uh, and Sukhoi 30 can take on uh, what F-22 Raf Raptor. It can take on uh, uh, F-35. It's much faster and easier to maintain, and uh, more agile. I was watching some of the Russian-made planes. They are very uh, maneuverable, very light, uh, very easy to keep. Uh, the United States has fallen behind. And the people who uh, 
are in the aerospace industry, they have become uh, uh, major teams. I heard that uh, Martin Mariella and uh, Senator McCain are, uh, uh, they have uh, like uh, swindled the government out of nine trillion dollars. I mean, these are uh, you know, large amounts of money that should have gone to new weapons development, and uh, these monies, uh, uh, and even if they went into weapons development, everything is so fraudulent and so expensive to manufacture and do in the United States that uh, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, I, I also heard that the Russian uh, fighter planes are like two, three, uh, who knows what else they have built, generations ahead of the United States. Uh, and there are other uh, other we weapons that uh, that uh, that are secret that nobody uh, talks about. Uh, I saw uh, uh, that the North Korea had equivalent of TAD system, it's uh, like top of the line. Uh, they they brought out their own. I mean, uh, uh, just because the country doesn't talk about their advanced weapons doesn't mean that they don't have it. And also, uh, the moral and combat readiness uh, of the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, military is very poor. And uh, many, uh, uh, many personnel, uh, they come out of combat, they commit suicide with a lot of problems. Uh, because they're unjust war, and they are, uh, they're exported to foreign countries and the local population hates them and I'm trying to get rid of them. Uh, well, uh, in the war movie I play, it shows that the uh, United States, you know, beats the locals and, uh, uh, you know, can keep the base. But, uh, yeah, hey, is that really true in the real world? Uh, if uh, the U.S. persist in uh, keeping bases in so many foreign countries. Uh, won't the foreigner uh, get fed up one day and use whatever weapons, uh, tactical nukes, whatever, to, to get rid of these people, uh, to get them off their soil? Or uh, would the United States uh, go completely bankrupt and many of these uh, fantastic warriors end up in Iranian or Russian prison. Uh, hey, do you know anybody who, uh, who uh, informs you of these real uh, things that are uh, happening right now? Uh, would you find, uh, like in CNN or uh, even uh, alternative media, such discussion or such consideration, even though these ideas or these uh, events or these uh, considerations are very, uh, uh, very much real and very much uh, right now happening. Uh, I don't see, I don't think that you, you will find this discussion in very many places. Anyhow, uh, my uh, videos and ideas are totally researched. Uh, you wouldn't find these things, uh, uh, maybe in some military brass, they know about it. Uh, okay. So I encourage you to subscribe and uh, uh, I'll have some more videos about this. Uh, I usually uh, uh, pray that the uh, US government just go back from belly up uh, financially so they will have to recall. Uh, uh, but these guys, they keep, uh, they got the, the Rothschild, the financiers, they keep printing money and keep going and more foreigners get killed, and sometimes some Americans too. Like, uh, this is a prayer. I, I pray that uh, this shit will end uh, uh, without uh, uh, too many people getting killed. And uh, uh, you know, uh, in the future, you know, those people that get killed, many of them could be Americans. Uh, well. Uh, Thank you very much for being in my website and uh, uh, please wish me luck to getting all these negative uh, uh, Hollywood roles. Thanks.